David, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thanks for asking me. It's great. I, I say that Don't You Worry About Me is a, is a, is a tender tribute to Liverpool um, mm. because it, it certainly is the sort of a third character in the movie yeah. between two characters. But it also seems like the, the reason for these characters to exist, it's, it kind of informs every single move in the film. Yeah, I mean, the film that uh, deals with a, a London boy who goes up to Liverpool in the pursuit of one girl and... He, he gets up there and she's not quite as single as he thought. And uh, so he's, he's abandoned in this city that's a strange city to him. And he ends up in a bookies and he meets this other girl in the bookies and she sort of takes him around her city. Mm. And it is about the effect the city has on them. It's 24 hours in their life. And she's sort of carrying a secret and, and the, it's about telling strangers things that we would never tell our most intimate friends. Right? It's strangely my favourite types of films. I mean, I know we live in a world where Avatar is, is dominates yeah, yeah. everything, but my favourite kind of films are two people walking around somewhere talking. Yeah. I, I mean, I just have always loved this. And it's, as a first time director, it was, it's some kind of relief I mean, because, you know, you're not going to get the budget to do a, a 3D spectacular. That's true. And you're looking all the time for influences in that way. Can I do this? So you see things like before sunset and before sunrise and you think well that, that can be done you know people will stay with this the audience will stay with this and also for me budgetary wise it was a, you know it cost me a hundred thousand pounds so it was interesting to also watch films like London to Brighton and once and see that also technically it could be done as well so I had those examples at my fingertips I knew that some people out there had gone on this journey and got to the end of it, so why couldn't I? Yeah, I mean, people do it at various stages. I mean, Annie Hall is, is sort of one mm, of those movies. Yeah. Uh, the, there was a, a lovely one in Los Angeles recently called uh, In Search of a Midnight That's Kiss, right, yeah. uh, which I was really thinking of in yours, because that took me to... That I saw places in Los Angeles that I'd never seen before, and equally, I've been to Liverpool a few times. Mm. But in your film, I saw places in Liverpool that I'd certainly never seen before. Me too. That's the great thing about going back to my own city after, what, 20-odd years of being here in London. The city's changed so much. It's changing rapidly. You know, there's been the city of culture since I mm. has been away and stuff like that. But new buildings, the whole of the waterfront. There's one shot in my film where you see the classic waterfront shot of the liver buildings and shots that we know from Brookside and the liver birds and stuff like that. But the very next shot is this whole modern city growing up next to that city, the next to those old classic buildings. Do the the Gormley statues yeah. as well, which um, I don't know if I've seen them on film before. Right. But you've, it's almost that gives you that brilliant. You, as a first time filmmaker, you're thinking, how do I get vastness? How do I get scale on yeah. a cheap budget? When that gave you, I mean, it does. And there's other places in the city that do that. But I think the one thing about the Gormleys, what they really give you, they give you this eerie sort of atmosphere. They're, they're a wonderful piece of artwork that he's kindly donated to the city. And they reflect Liverpool for me as well, these people standing on the beach and you don't know whether they're waiting to go somewhere, longing to be somewhere else or waiting for someone to come home. And I like that feeling. And actually, of course, when they were first put there, they were all the same. But now they've changed. They've all got their own idiosyncrasies. And the further out towards the sea they are, the more green. And I've got some of them with the green mm. man with all the stuff hanging off them. And I love how they change. And also... People, well, when the tide is out, people put hats on them and scarves on them and, and other things that aren't quite as uh, <laughs> friendly. But, um, you know, they are, they're a very interactive piece of artwork and I love that. And I think the film, at that point in the film, something happens between the characters as well that they suddenly get to know something about. They sort of become, you know, they, yeah. they're, they're, they are characters yeah. and then when they see these, I suppose, testaments to humanity in a way, yeah. they become more human yeah. themselves. And, it's and they're really rushing about before that. There's a sense that they're rushing about and he wants to be somewhere and he's sort of slightly hungover and he's coming. And then it just slows down at that point in the film before it speeds up again. And it's, it just takes a little bit of time out. And I often feel that myself when I'm down there on... Crosby Beach, that it's important just to chill out there, and it's a very nice place to re reflect, I guess. The, um, the humour comes through quite sort of quite quickly, and I mean, it's always a sort of awful cliche to sort of say, well, the Scouse humour comes through. Yeah. It's sort of impossible, though, to make a film without that humour com coming through, I isn't it? I think Liverpool uh, does have a humour that is, uh, is, can be a defence mechanism. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like they take the mickey out of people to see if they can, if they, they can take that, and also they don't mind that happening to them slightly. But with Tina, particularly, I think, with the, uh, the character that Helen plays, it's very much humour as, as a weapon. She's trying to keep people away from mm. her in that way. She doesn't want to get too intimate with people. And it's just taking the mickey. And I think our uh, Southern character finds that slightly difficult at first, but uh, he has to warm to that. This is the Liverpool bus. Yes, mate. 
What are you waiting for? Enjoy yourself. Anyway, I don't even know his name. What's your name, love? David. I was so heartened by them once the camera went on them and I was watching rushes and thinking it's really going to work and and also the one thing that they were never used to was that sense of telling it out of order you know they've been doing it up for a play for a year which obviously has a, a lineal sort of storytelling and uh, they were suddenly being asked to do the end first and then do this scene in the middle and stuff and they were all over the place and they <laughs> but they got to that very quickly they were great with them. So if you go to Liverpool when you get lost I mean as a Londoner if I have a night out in Liverpool you're yeah, going yeah. to go to a book you're going to get drunk you're going to eat a sausage in a cafe you're going to yeah. get beaten up by some girls Yeah yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> it's, it's well, Only if you're cruel to one of their own Right I think that's the thing. What I like about that scene is they these girls see this man effectively you know manhandling this woman and they're not having it they're going to get involved <laughs> so they're, they're sort of your uh, your knight on shining, shining armour are two girls with push chairs really so yeah. that's where they come in I thought that was And really also why it was great with these girls was I said to them, he's really want to, going to want to get past you so he can get to this girl. Don't let him pass at all. And they really went for it. And that was great. <laughs> and Jamie, the leading actor, was covered in bruises down his legs for days to come. So that was really good. That will learn you. Don't take, don't take on the Liverpool girls. Never do that. There's a, and that's that brilliant. I mean, it's part of the same scene. That's a brilliant, surreal image of, of smacking this teddy bear. Yeah, they uh, which were. is both, both surreal and funny, but but yeah. quickly turns quite dark. He he needs something to sort of vent his anger on, and all he's got is this cuddly toy. Which, when they first get it, seems to be this romantic, silly sort of gesture that they've got. But sit, it, during the scene, because it sort of turns Pershing, it becomes a burden to them. And uh, but they've got to keep hold of it. And then uh, you, we take that full circle, and we see that the bear will have a nice home, I yeah. think, as well. So. But yeah, it was quite weird filming that day because obviously the, where we filmed in New Brighton, there was quite a lot of people there and I had the Jamie beating hell out of this bear and the comments. So I wish I'd had a, a microphone on those comments because they were quite funny. But well. great old Scouse comments yeah, there. Was, you see, that's <laughs> priceless stuff. That's You're missing it. Yeah, no. the, uh, the, the other strange coincidence, I don't know if, the, if you, because you said you, your funding was different, but the, 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 the part of the City of Culture um, yeah, yeah. The initiatives, there were Terence Davis's film that yeah, was yeah, uh, about right. sort of the yeah, changing city. city. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Um, and um, of course, Lindy Heyman's film, uh, mm. Kicks, yeah, yeah. which features... Um, the yeah. same uh, brilliant art installation that your film does, which is the... You're turning the Place Over, yeah. Yeah, which is the... the I can't remember the name of the artist. It's, it's, I can't remember the name of the artist, but it's called Turning the Place Over, and what happened is part of Liverpool bi Biennial then, not, not just the City of Culture, and it was, um, it was an old disused building, and I was driving around Liverpool and I saw it, and I thought that would be a great place for him to wake up hungover, because it is like... And Linda used it with this girl just walking down the street and you slightly don't know what's going on. And when I met her, I did a QA and a with her at, uh, for the LFF. We were both, both of our films were in the LFF. And uh, we both, it is a filmmaker's dream. You can't not use it, really. Because, I mean, so, you couldn't afford that effect. No, you know what I mean? No if someone way. asked you to do it. You couldn't have done it, you know. But it was, it is, a, a, again, a very strange, like, sort of a feeling it has on you. It's sort of a very displacement feeling. But Liverpool has a lot of that. I mean, it's always been, when I was a kid growing up, you know, the Walker Art Gallery was a big place for us to go. And it, there was great paintings like, and when did you last see your father was mm. there? And there was a lot of other great artists with there. So it was, it was always, we always felt it was encouraged to be like that. You know, the, the, we had the Liverpool poets as well as the music scene, the Liverpool everyman. And, you know, I remember years ago seeing Gumshoe, which was Stephen Frears' film. With, yeah, with uh, Albert Finney. Finney. Which is set in Liverpool. Mm. And that, I just thought that was a work of genius. I love that film. Right, so it, it makes Liverpool into, like, Chicago. It's it got does, that noir. He's, he's, the, he's a guy who was a bingo caller in a club, and he sort of is obsessed with Chandler. And then he thinks he's seeing this sort of crime going on, and he follows it down, which is all about shipping arms to South Africa. Mm. But the fact that that was in my hometown as well was wonderful. Yeah, that's a lovely film. Now, the, um, the other thing that I have to always ask a first-time director is, have, did, have you done enough now to want to do more, or was, is that it, you know, <laughs> to do it again? I really want to do more. I mean, I'm always very envious of that story of Sam Mendes when he talks about uh, American Beauty, and he says that Spielberg said to him after four or five days, listen, we're, we're going to start again. I've seen it's great. It's, I really like it, Sam, but we're going to start again. And just kind of, uh, when, even when I watch my film, I think, God, I wish I'd had the first week again, because it is like a rehearsal week. Where it's where you get, but I guess my, that will be for me doing my next film. So there's lots of things I want to do. I'd like a bit more money next time. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd build in a little bit more rehearsal period beforehand. But, uh, you know, even when I speak to filmmakers who are doing million dollar movies, the 
problems that they have are very similar to the problems I had in microcosm, you know, and so it's, it's all about your schedule, wanting a bit more money, mm. not having enough time, things like that. So, you know, it's... it's is, is directing a sort of some, something that, you, you know, acting as a young man's game, you've had a wonderful career doing that? No, I you... think I'm definitely an actor who directs. That's what I want to do. I mean, I am an actor. I love acting. It's, it is what I've always wanted to do, and I get a lot from it. I think the question for me, and you know, as a director, projects take a long time to get to fruition. So you know, in the meantime, mm. I'm very lucky to be able to act as well. The question for me would be whether I would direct myself, and that I find uh, an interesting question because when I act as a just purely as an actor, I tend to cut myself off from mm. the paraphernalia that's going on around me, and I like to sort of isolate myself, and I use a an iPod and stuff to keep myself in a mood away from all the the madness. Because as, as a director, you can't do that. You've got to be. You are part. You are creating the madness effectively. So, whether I do that, although when I look at people like, you know, uh, Polanski and Casavetes and stuff like that, and Eastwood, you know, it can be done. Obviously, so it's uh, it would be an interesting one to see if I could do that. But I'm not. Sylvester I'm, Stallone did it. Stallone, though, and Mel Gibson. As yeah. Well. So exactly. I mean, you know, they. It, it, it's not unprecedented. Yeah. It's I not do. Uh, I do. Do wonder whether I'm the right person.